That's right, I started right off with the midweek musing because it is a midweek musing. It is midweek. I'm Alex. I'm the boogeyman. There's no point in beating around the bush. So we're doing March Madness tournament right now. How much power can you get on these bags for a three minute round? I'm going to give you seven, seven tips that will give you more power on your punches. You can use them today and they will work. Number seven is a little bit advanced. Stay tuned for that one. Some are obvious, some maybe not so obvious. So number one, we've talked about this over and over and over again. I'm sure you can guess what it is. It's use your entire body to throw punches. If I just throw a hook with my arm like this, that's only gonna be so much because I'm just using a few muscles. If I turn everything together and I shift my weight into it, I'm gonna get so much more power out of it and of course the better workout too. So use your entire body to throw punches. Don't just use your arms or even just your upper body. Everything, everything, everything. It starts in the feet, works its way up to the hands. Number two, you can preload your punches with your body as well by shifting your weight. So if I throw a jab cross lead hook, right? I'm gonna throw a jab. When I throw my cross, I'm shifting my weight to this side, putting that weight on that side so that I can turn it back and throw the lead hook. Preload with your body. Don't preload with your hands. This is something that a lot of people do, and it's our focus point this week too. You go jab, cross, and this hand's way out there. Just look, as much I can get a big wind up on it and throw the hook. Yeah, you might get power doing that, but actually you're gonna get more power by being compact, believe it or not, it may not feel that way, and it may not even be true at first, but as you get better and better at boxing, you'll see, you get just as much power. You don't need these long windups. You can stay compact, and you're gonna get just as much power, and you're gonna be a lot more efficient. Number three is a little less obvious. Something I have mentioned before is a trick to get more power on your punches. Mike Tyson does this. You see a lot of MMA fighters do it. It can be a little risky, but it will definitely give you more power, and it is dropping your weight down into all punches that aren't uppercuts or liver shots or anything coming at that upward angle. And it, you don't have to go nuts with this either. It's sometimes you'll talk about sitting down your punches again. You don't have to go nuts. So I want to throw a cross, right? I can stay here, throw the cross, or I can just get that little drop of my weight into that punch. So you can do it on hooks as well, right? I can stay up, throw the hook, or I can drop down just a little bit. You're gonna get that little extra oomph. And it's not just a casual dip, it's dropping. It's dropping that weight. Again, maybe split second timing, but something you could do to definitely get more power. Number four, speaking of uppercuts, but it's true for other punches as well. Remember, the ground is a source of power for you. So if you're gonna throw an uppercut, right, you could dip down, load it with your body, you're gonna push off the ground. That ground's not going anywhere, at least hopefully not. You're gonna push off the ground, and that's gonna drive more power into the punch. You're lifting up off the ground, pushing, digging that that ball of your foot into the ground, gripping it like a hand and driving out and throwing the uppercut. You can get this to a liver shot as well, but you can even get it on a cross, right? You're pushing, you can push off that back foot, that's gonna give you more power on a cross. Hooks, not so much, because they're a little bit more rotational, but a little bit. As you're turning, you can start to push on that lead foot if you're throwing a lead hook, a rear foot if you're throwing a rear hook. Number five, change your stance, potentially, depending on what stance you have. So, for power punching, you want a more open stance. What does that mean? That means my, I've got my front toe pointed forward. I've got my back toe pointed 90-ish degrees. Not quite 90, it doesn't need to be a full 90. It can be, I don't know, 85, 80, 75, whatever. You also wanna position yourself on the bag so that my left foot or my lead foot is kind of on one side, my rear foot is on the other side. You want space between your legs. You don't wanna be a full square stance. You still want the staggered stance, but you want your toes pointed forward, you want your hips open. Yes, I know, I know, if you are fighting, then you're giving your opponent more targets to hit in this open stance. Whereas if I'm more bladed, I'm a little bit harder to hit because I'm a little bit smaller target I can cover up. If that is your style of fighting, then that's totally fine. But we're talking about power, getting power. You're gonna see, if you look at any boxer, because anyone who says boxers all stand like this is completely wrong. You watch any card, you'll see boxers with open stances. Everyone has a lot of power. The boxers that are more speed oriented, more points moving in and out, they're gonna usually be more bladed sometimes. It can depend, but it is definitely not true that boxers don't use more open stance. Plenty of them do. I don't even need to name them, just watch a fight, you'll see it. So the reason why this gives you more power is because you've got more balance to shift your weight from one foot to the other. Your balance is better, you're strong in every direction. Whereas when you're bladed, especially if this front toe is turned in, you're not gonna have that same 
balance. You're going to be able to move quickly back and forth in. That is true. You're going to bless targets. That is true. But if you're talking about power, open up your stance. So you can just kind of take a look at your feet, make sure they're not, there's no line between your front foot and back foot that goes straight. You got that back toe turned out a little bit and the front toe is turned close to forward. It's going to allow you to rotate better, especially on that lead side. Again, every puncher with extreme power has a more open stance. Number six is about punching through the target. And no, this does not mean that you're gonna throw a cross and go like that. You still gotta bring your hand back quickly. Still gotta bring it back quickly, but your goal is not to just stop at contact. You're not just going hey, like ringing a bell. You wanna punch like you're trying to go through the back. So you throw the cross, right? You still punch all the way through it, but just bring the hand back quickly. If you throw a hook, right? We don't wanna over swing on a hook and miss, but it still means when you're thinking about throwing that hook, you shouldn't be thinking about hitting there. You should be thinking about punching a hole in the back. So you throw the hook and you go all the way through. You're already bringing your weight past the target, getting power into that hook, punching through the target. Don't just stop when you get there. Really complete your motion. Bring your hands back quickly. Don't leave them out there. It doesn't mean push, but complete the motion. So number seven, this is the one that's maybe a little bit harder. You don't want to be too much in your head about it because it can screw you up. But if you've been doing this for a while, it's creating a whipping effect on all your punches. I was talking about with the jab, but you can do it on every punch. And what that means is there's a microsecond delay between your hips, your lower body, and your hand. So again, using the lead hook as an example, your body will start to turn first and the hook will kind of follow and create that whip. So it's, it's not quite perfectly in line with your body. It's trailing behind a little bit because that will cause it to snap and that whipping effect is what's gonna give you more power, it's gonna be more painful. Again, you're gonna get your hand back really quickly, you're not gonna leave your hand out there. Uh, that is the power of the whip, so you can try that. And again, don't overthink it, don't get too crazy about it, I don't want you to throw your whole timing off. But if you've got that little delay, that little delay, so you're just a tiny bit ahead with your lower body than your upper body, you'll create a nice whip, you'll hear a nice sound. Some of our power punchers do this very well. Josh, I know you're listening. Um, this is, you're, you're awesome at this, so everybody watch Josh if you don't like watching me. And there's one more thing I was gonna say too about power in your punches. Cause it is true that you can step into your punches and get a lot more power, you know, especially on the straight punches, right? You can step in, bam, get a lot more power. Definitely, certainly on the jab too, right? You step in, bam, power jab. That's a way to do it, but it's not entirely practical to fight that way. We're always stepping into your punches. All these other things you can do all the time at any point in the fight. The stepping in, you're gonna reserve for situations where that makes sense. But it shouldn't just be that everything you're doing, you're stepping forward and you're getting all cramped when you get close to the back. So there you go, seven things. It's a long list. Oh, it was worth it though. I guarantee you it's gonna give you more power. Ask me any questions. I have mused.